Hey everyone, as promised, this is Jess Brannis. Welcome to the Drinks with Jess podcast live stream from the New Jersey LGBT Chamber of Commerce. If you didn't hear about it, go back and listen to episode 106. I talked all about tonight's event. Hopefully I'll see some of you here, but I'm here with Dory Eidelberg. She's been on the show before with FSP like about two years ago. Yep. I think. Yep. That's and, right. Uh, and so Dory is now the VP of Marketing and Communications. Correct. And uh, so she wanted to jump on real quick with me. So that way we could tell you a little bit about this event. So mm -hmm. what's going on here? Um, hi, everyone. Is this the right mic yeah, or should I know? Okay. 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 So we are here for the second annual um, holiday sing-along. It's a networking event and it's a holiday celebration. Um, we have Bob Egan on piano. Um, and he'll be playing the, the songs that we'll be singing. Uh, we have Furley Almonte, who is an amazing um, host. And um, we have a phenomenal um, performer, uh, Carl Max. Carl Max, you guys are probably familiar yeah, with him. Carl is an amazing uh, Whitney Houston impersonator. So and we're here, we have food, we have drinks. We're gonna have a raffle. Um, we're gonna be raffling I saw off Santa Claus here. a lot of prizes. Yes, yes, we have Santa. Santa, uh, you know, surprised us. Drop by. So, um, you know, if you want to sit on Santa's lap and and I'm uh, a Jew. oh, okay, that's right. Okay, yeah. well, he probably doesn't mind. So. Yeah, I probably wouldn't mind at this point either. <laughs> After a few more drinks, maybe, right? And, uh, I have to drive tonight. And I have to be online several times. So this is what's gonna happen, guys. Yes. Throughout the night between now and probably about 9 o'clock because Carl Max is going to perform at 9. So I am going to sporadically come on and live stream as much of this event as possible. And then I'm also going to wrap it in a neat little package for all of you to see on YouTube Yay. later on this week when we're done. But Dory, thank you for creating such a wonderful event. Is there thank anybody for coming, Jess. Is there, really appreciate it. Is there anything else that you want to say to the people out there with what, what they could do to help out? Well, um, we are a fairly new organization. We're about five years old, and we are the only LGBT um, a, um, Chamber of Commerce in New Jersey, mm -hmm. and we cover the whole state. We're an affiliate chapter of National, uh, the National Chamber, uh, LGBT Chamber of Commerce, and we're here to support LGBT-owned businesses and allies. So, you know, we're, we're, we have mixers throughout the state and events. People can come out, meet other professionals, network, and, you know, there's all different ways we support uh, chamber members. So uh, visit our website. Um, it's uh, njlgbtchamber.org. And um, there's opportunities in there for membership, and um, and we're also looking for volunteers. So we, and that's uh, a big thing that a lot of organizations need are the volunteers. Yes, yes, we're an all volunteer organization. Um, nobody gets uh, paid for any of it. So, um, but we love what we do, and we like supporting each other and giving back to the community. So. That's why we're here. Well, I am very honored that you brought me here today, and we are going to make sure that we have a good time for the rest of you. Make sure you keep tuning in. I'm going to actually bring somebody else on the mic right now while we're sitting here. This is going to like this. This is a treat. Why don't you sit over here, dear? All right. Yeah, we just. I, I have one hot filmmaker right here. But no, I'm the star. I'm not the filmmaker. You're the star. Okay, so okay. Um, why don't you tell everybody who you are and about your film? Okay, my name is Jan Moore, and my wife, uh, Emily, is here with me tonight. We just celebrated our 49th anniversary, and somebody made a movie about us called Love Wins. Love wins. That's right. awesome. When was this film made? This film was made three years ago. It was used for the opening of Pride June three years ago. Wow. And it hasn't died. We just won our 10th film festival. Really? That's it'd, amazing. It'll be in Dunedin, Florida in January uh, at the International Film Festival there. We use it as a tool to educate people about seniors of the LGBT community. That is awesome. Now, how do you feel about passing like your history and your information to the next generations? Because I think, you know, a lot of the younger generation needs some help. Uh, I'm not sure they do. They're really great <laughs> kids. Uh, Emily and I have been lucky enough to be asked by high school kids mm -hmm. to talk. We've spoken to about 20 colleges. Oh, fantastic. We speak at senior residential living. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we talk about the prejudice that's involved. And we say that you've got to talk to us. You've got to have conversation. Emily and I are the parents of three children, grandparents and great grandparents. And we're very active with Garden State Equality. They have uh, taken a liking to us and us to them. So they arrange where we can speak to people on their educational things for the senior community. Awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's we cool. love it. We love it because I'm 82, M's 89, and we're still out there being activists. And that's a fantastic thing. Uh, well, I, I am very honored to have met you tonight because not only is this a great event, but meeting you and hearing your story, where can everybody find the movie? Well, we can't right now because um, the problem is it's still on the circuit. And until it's bought, okay. I don't think she's going to release it publicly. But Robin may be here tonight. She's uh, Her name is Robin Kemp, the filmmaker, who was the architect of this whole thing. She's married to Luann Peter Paul, who has uh, one of the original people with Garden State Equality who was one of the major architects of the bullying law in the state of New Jersey, which is the best law in the whole country. Right. So it's just a fantastic thing. Yeah. Well, maybe I could talk Robin into releasing it so everybody out there can I see it. I would love it. I hope she's here tonight. I have my way. Okay. All right. Very good. Is that a deal? That's a deal. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining and us. Thank you. For all of you out there, again, we are live at the New Jersey LGBT Chamber of Commerce annual holiday sing-along. We're going to have a lot more fun. Carl Max is going to be joining me soon. You've known Carl. He's been on my show several times, and we are going to have some fun tonight. So tune in probably in about another 15 minutes. And for those of you who are missing this, we will make sure that we wrap this in a nice little package for you and put it on YouTube later on. So we'll talk to you soon. Everybody, drinks with Jess. This is Jess Brown is your host, and we are back again. I told you all night tonight. From we started at like 6:30, I think, I think so. and and we're gonna go on until you start kind of doing your show. Yes. yes. And as you guys know, my favorite man, Carl Max, is Aww. back. Hi, everybody. How Hi, you Facebook. doing? I'm good. I'm uh, busy. You know, blessed. Yeah. Always blessed to be here with you. You're you're looking good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, you know. Just really doing a lot of charity organizations, and I was blessed to come. I need a cocktail. Uh, yes, you do. I'm, I'm empty. Just. There you go. Just like old times. Oh, yeah. We don't miss a beat. No, but <coughs> got caught up there real quick. Uh, but I was blessed I to come to New says Jersey. That they miss you, Aaron Stobel. Oh, uh, hi, Aaron. <laughs> How are you, sweetheart? Um, happy birthday, I think. I think it's your birthday, but. I, um, I was blessed to come here to New Jersey in Asbury Park for the Northern New Jersey Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. uh, for this sing-along. And I'm here with Bob Egan, who I love, yep. love, love, love Bob Egan, uh, Ferry, who's our uh, hostess. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, I want to say thank you to Dory and the uh, Chamber for having me here. But okay. yeah. Yeah, this is a fantastic organization. And I was, you know what, when, when Dory asked me to come out here and, and live stream all night, of course, I can't say to Dory. But when she told me you were going to be here, I absolutely could not say no to this. Did you get like the little tingle? I in did. Your body? I was like, oh, damn, Carl Max. <laughs> yeah, I was super excited. Uh, well, I'm super excited to always see you and to be here with you. 
Fury. How yes. Is we're, we're just going to get her right on next. I know. But, uh, you know, to have you here with me again, it's always a blessing. I follow you all the time. You're absolutely fantastic. Everything that you're doing, you need to call somebody and, like, let's get things rolling, popping, clicking. I'm, I'm ready. You know, ready. I, I had to take a little bit of a hiatus and take care of some stuff. But, you know. The last time you and I were together, I was actually retiring. Yeah, I know. That was our exclusive. And then it was. The, the man held me down, mm -hmm. and now my contract, I don't retire until 2020. Okay, well, yeah. good, because that way there are plenty more shows that I could see you at. Yeah, yeah, unless I'm underneath the grass, you know, that's, that's it. it. And the great thing with Carl is that he's actually going to come back on right before he goes on, so you'll actually see him as Prince Whitney Houston. Yeah. So that's going to be awesome. I can't wait. Well, listen, guys, I know you can't be here. I'm so excited to have you here with us um it's an amazing event so please next year i won't be here but come to asbury park support the businesses support the people and of course support the lgbt community that's right because we rock oh look look at all that Aww. we get all those likes we love you guys carl right. i'm gonna let you get ready I love the you. only man who ever kisses me <laughs> is carl i tickle her fancy that's it all, all right, right. All right. thank you Oh, yes. And the hostess with the most. This is like a good one. The hostess with the mostest. How you feeling? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love that introduction. Yes. I feel fantastic and very furlicious. Uh, furlicious? <laughs> furlicious. Oh, furlicious. Yeah. This is Furly yes. Alcante. She is the Almonte. host of Almonte. Yeah. Furlicious stands for heart centered, soul inspired, purpose driven. Wow. Yes. You know I, what w, WJD stands for? What? What would Jesse do? Ooh, I love that. I'm actually going to make a segment of that, so you guys better wait till next month for that one, because that's going to be uh, very inappropriate, I'm sure. But anyway, so so <laughs> you've, been, you've yes. been hosting a lot of events. Yes. And and so what's the general feeling of, about being here with the, the New Jersey LGBT Chamber of Commerce? Freedom exuberance connection you feel like you belong that's one thing i love about this um this is my second year in a row to host this event and it's i'm i keep coming back because there's something just immensely spiritually beautiful about being part of this group because you feel not only business connections but truly you know, that deep level of meaningful, lasting friendship. Mm -hmm. And you cannot put a price tag on that. That's right. She she already accosted me and, and made me one of her new best friends uh, exactly. as soon as she walked in. But I'm, I'm very excited to, to do some more work with you because you are a very, very talented individual. And you have a lot going on. Like, you do more than just host events. You know what? I live life vibrantly audaciously and there's no other way to live life except that way because let me tell you something i've been disabled for more than 10 years and i've lost many loved ones and when you go through so many adversities in life it makes you see life so differently it makes you embrace each present day as though it's a, a chance for amazing way to live absolutely and um and I love that I do that, you mm -hmm. know? And look at you, look at me, like this, this, this person, is fun. oh my gosh, I get to meet, this is like a gift. This is like a great free Christmas You're gonna make gift. me blush. Wait a minute, you're Jewish, so free Hanukkah. <laughs> yeah, hey, Hanukkah starts Sunday. All right, I'm ready for it. And you know what's great about Hanukkah? You really don't have to, unless you have little kids, you don't go out and buy presents. You just have to send a check. So that way you're not waiting in lines. You don't have to worry about those Black Friday fights. Uh, uh, nothing. You you sit at home and watch all the craziness on TV and send a check. Oh, check. Mm -hmm. That's why we all go to college. We all get checks. <laughs> well, yeah. I get to the point that, you know, you know what they say, credit for this, but cash is really always works. But, you know, there gets to be a point in time that you also want things that are not with price sense absolutely and i love those kind of gifts i like my my dog gives me a kiss on the face in the morning god happiness is a warm puppy to quote charlie brown you know i lost my 
doggy about three years ago, and I felt like I lost. A child. Oh, I don't. Oh. I don't even want to go there. Oh my God! I, I'm telling you. So when I lose I, Nacho, it's gonna be so upsetting to me. What's the name Nacho? Yeah, he's a big black oh. pitbull, and his name's Nacho. He's oh, beautiful. Cute. I love dogs. He's beautiful. Oh my God! All, all the listeners out there, the people that watch and listen, they all know Nacho. I've had stories about him. I did a whole show about what he's brought to okay, my life. Okay, where did the name come from? Uh, that was his name that the rescue gave to him. Oh, and he was a rescue. Oh my gosh, he's gorgeous! He's be he is dumb as hell, but he is so beautiful. I, I always figure you can only have three or two out of the three things in a triangle. So you have beauty, brawn, and brain. He's got <laughs> beauty and brawn. You know, it's like you can get fast, cheap, or good. Uh -huh. You can only get two of them. Hey, listen, you asked me a question. We're here at the NJLGBT Chamber of Commerce Holiday Sing Along. It's your first time here, right? Yes, it is. Okay, look at me. I'm turning things around here. Oh, no. Yeah. Now you're interviewing me? Yeah. Oh. So what brought you to this place and why did you... Not, it's not really sudden. You were invited, but what pulled you? Well, to... first of all, Dory is a, a wonderful friend of mine, so I can't say no to her. But, you know, I've, I have come up here for the Pride events. I love oh, Asbury okay. Park. Um, I know it well. I haven't been up in a while, but you know, to be a part of a, an event where the organization is not only doing something wonderful like this, but they're setting themselves up because it's a fairly new organization. They this is their second year, but they're trying to set themselves up for the next generations because the next generation of LGBT are going to be the business owners. They're going to be the people, you know making the rules, running the country, hopefully, and, and putting themselves out there, whether it's in education or politics or medicine. So we want them to have this community as a bigger community to support them so they can support their own businesses. You know, that's beautiful that you shared that because I truly believe that when I said earlier that when I come in here, I feel free. Mm -hmm. Now, let this be an inspiration for many of us who are out there looking to be heard, you know, desiring to be seen and yearning to make a difference in the world. This is a place to start. And, you know, um, you feel like you belong to a family like no other. Right. And I feel like I, I have a new, yes. new, new. She's got a new best friend, a new BFF right yes, here. I know. And guess what? Stay tuned because we, in, in the five minutes that we spoke, we already came up with a bazillion different things. I'm going to be very want. busy for the next couple of years. Definitely. And you'll see this electrifying connection. This is going to explode into magnificence. So oh, this is just crazy. watch out there, okay? I'm really excited about this. And it was such an honor to meet you. I know that you have to go get ready. All right. Um, so I'm going to let you do that. Okay. You're going to see more of Farley. Al Monte. All right. See you. Bye. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Will you do me a favor? This man standing right here. Can you tap him for me? Because I wanted to bring him over for everybody to uh, hear from. Guys, so this has been a wonderful event so far. I hope you can hear the mic and everything is uh, going on. Teresa Liberato, how you doing? Uh, we are actually in Asbury Park right now at the New Jersey LGBT Chamber of Commerce. And I have a Jerry Miller. Jerry, why don't you come sit over here so the camera can see you. Uh, but we are live streaming, and Jerry here I just met. Uh, we were introduced by Dory. You're going to hear Dory's name all night. You saw her on the first uh, live stream. But Jerry, you were, Jerry and I were having a talk about glasses because uh, for those of you who don't know, I just got a pair of bifocals, and I was telling him how I fall all over the place. And he is the glasses man. So, Jerry... Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit of your business up here in Asbury? How you doing? I'm an optical concierge service, so what I do is I bring glasses to you. Mm -hmm. So all you need is your prescription, and I actually come over with 450 frames, and I make sure that you, everything fits you properly. Mm -hmm. I measure everything up on you, and then I make sure they're all adjusted, and, and uh, I bring them back to you so you can... Have them at your house at convenience that you don't have to go to a store. You're not dealing with all the people around you. You don't have to be embarrassed that you have, you're, you have to move your hair whatever way. And you are there just at your convenience under your own lighting and your own surroundings. See, I, I and, and I love that you say that because, um, so I'm going to put something out there. None of you guys know this, but I'm going to tell you now. 
Uh, I am one of those people who, when I have to go for glasses, I have to get child size frames. So it's actually kind of embarrassing when you go to a store and like you're 42 years old looking in the child section without a child. Like I should have to rent a child <laughs> to take in that has the same like head size. But I, I think that's very convenient. So, so when you go to people's houses and, and measure them, it is, do they always seem to find the frames that they like? Because I know for me, like, I go to a store and, like, everything was in, like, neon and shit. Believe it or not, I have a little talent that I can actually look at you. And if I see you prior to, I will literally pick out three frames and say, this is the one that they're going to pick. Okay. I actually, I, I like to see who the person is. I will, I've been doing this for 30 years. Wow. So I literally have an idea of what customers like. Somebody said I got new five vocals too. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, see Maria Wall. So I literally make sure that everything's done properly for you, and I I check out everything. I look at you. I want to make sure that you, it looks perfect for you. Uh, I, I restyle you if you need to be restyled. I just a, do. Do you travel down to Philadelphia? I can, if I need to. Uh, it's a little, it's like Philly's an unlicensed state, so I can go across the border. Now, what does that mean, it's an unlicensed state? It, in the optical field, it, we have a, every state is a license. Like in Jersey, New York, we go to school, we have our license for that state. Okay. So we go through school, we get licensed to do what we're doing. So Jersey's one of the strictest states for optical. Okay. So our measurements and everything else has to be stricter than a lot of we don't have a national standard we're under stricter standards okay so for those of you in asbury park if you need to get glasses of any kind we have so many oh trifocals take some getting used to yeah I, uh, shannon yeah they do i have progressive bifocals and i i can't get used to them yet but where can everybody in asbury park find you because if you need glasses out in asbury jerry is your man and he will come to your house uh oh, yes, look at this. Anywhere Vision, and on the back is our phone, is all the information. Okay. It's, uh, my phone number is going to be 732-372-5610, and it's Gerard at AnywhereVision.com. I love that. I think that is fantastic. So are, if you are in or around Asbury Park and you're looking for some glasses, and you don't want to go to the store and get child size frames like I do or fall going out of the store after you pick them up. And I literally will come to them because that's what I do. I bring my glasses to them. That's awesome. I, in fact, this is the first time I've ever heard of a business like that and I adore it. So for all of you out there, please make sure you check out Anywhere Vision. Um, Jerry, I hope you have a wonderful night. It was Thank so nice you. meeting you. Great. And I'm going to be calling you for my next pair of glasses. Please do. I'll, I'll meet you at a restaurant. You won't have to come all the way to Philly. I'll meet you halfway. Yes. Okay? Or going to summer to the beach. Oh, yeah. Perfect. All right, Jerry. Thanks a lot. Uh, for the rest of you, we still have a lot of time here. We have about two more hours that we're going to be coming on and live streaming. Um, I am looking at the comments as we are doing this show. So, uh, Gretchen. Thank you for saying hello from Minneapolis. Hello right now from New Jersey. It's so weird not to be in Philadelphia right now, but this is a wonderful event. Um, they have a Santa Claus that came in, and uh, and uh, a guy said, wow, Santa's even here. I said, that's great for a Jew since Hanukkah's starting for me on, on Sunday. Uh, but, you know, guys, this is the season for giving. I'm actually looking at my logo on their TV screens right now, which is kind of cool. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> Santa's walking around and dancing. I love it. Uh, but we are going to have a lot of fun tonight. And again, guys, one thing about um, not only the New Jersey Chamber of Commerce or New Jersey LGBT Chamber of Commerce, but also um, any other uh, nonprofit organization. I get to work with them quite frequently. Uh, in fact, my my company, Brannis Enterprises, uh, tends to uh, like to work with fundraising campaigns. Uh, you can always check us out. But you know, one thing that they need, they need they need funding. Th that is absolutely for sure. They need to be able to help others. They also need volunteers, guys. So if you are in New Jersey, now the New Jersey LGBT Chamber of Commerce is also ally friendly. You don't have to be LGBT, but they cover the entire state. So if you have the time, if you want to volunteer, um, you know, make sure you check out their website. I will make sure 
Uh, actually, I have their website from episode 106, so you can check that out uh, on iTunes or Mixcloud. That went out uh, this morning. But we are going to be right back with, uh, I don't know who's coming up next, so we're going to go find out. I'm going to take a short break, get another drink, and we will be back in, I'm going to say about 15, 20 minutes. Although, my new favorite lady's coming over. How you doing? Oh, she, she was already on. My favorite actress. I love it. So we are going to give us uh, about a 15-minute break. We will be back live streaming very soon, and uh, we'll talk to you then. Stay tuned. <laughs> Guys, we are back live at the New Jersey LGBT Chamber of Commerce event. I told you the Drinks With Just podcast is going to be here all night live streaming throughout the night till probably about 9 o'clock or so. It's been a very long day. Uh, but I am here with the DJ of the night, Uncle's nephew, who actually gave me various CDs of his work. So I am very, very excited about this. Um, so why don't you uh, talk a little bit about, well, you, you seem to be a jack of all trades here. Yeah, first Phillip. of all, what's your first name? Philip. 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 Okay. Yeah. And how'd you come up with Uncle's nephew? Uncle's nephew. So um, I'm formerly from the uh, band Grapefruit Sound Lab, electronic dance music band. It consisted of uh, two gay couples, and um, when that broke up, I uh, kind of wanted to do, still do what I was doing, and, you know, I'm a big people person, so I have my nephew, Nick, who uh, is living, has been living with me and my boyfriends from 16 up till 24, and when it was time for me to separate from Grapefruit Sound Lab, I was like, all right, so what should I call myself? And Nick, my nephew, the first thing he said was uncle's nephew, and... And so it's Come stuck. on, how can how can you yeah? How can you steer away from that? It was just natural. But like so so you you came up with the name Uncle's Nephew. Yes. And that's very I, I like the story because that's like super sweet. Oh totally. Um so and like he's you know, he has a girlfriend and you know he's you know, he's Nick, but he's so embracive with our community and you know, he wouldn't be here right now. And he's here right now. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> So being here at the uh, Chamber of Commerce sing-along, like, did you do this event last year? I didn't. I didn't. And they said there wasn't a DJ. So when I got the call, I was like, you have to have music. You, you, can't, you can't just sit around in dead hair. Yeah. You can't. And you so. were playing some great stuff. Like once like George Michael came on, I was excited as hell. George Michael. I did a little Melanie Martinez, um, Kylie Minogue. Uh, you know, I kind of play for the crowd. A lot of DJs play for themselves. I play for the people. Yeah. And that's a, a problem that I see in a lot of nightclubs that I work with is the fact that a lot of the DJs just want to play like their own stuff and exactly. not play to the crowd. Exactly. Um, I kind of like take in what's around me and I kind of like feed off from, from that. Right. And then I go. And it's usually always a win-win situation every time. Now you're you're in Asbury Park, but you have DJed in New York, like you said. I'm, Robinstown. I'm trying to get him down to Philadelphia. Yeah, Philly, Philly. Yeah. Uncle's nephew, bring him to a uh, Philly, please. Yeah. But so uh, so, what's the difference between, for example, um, doing a gig down here in New Jersey as opposed to like a club in New York? I feel like being in Jersey is kind of like more of a laid back vibe. I just do what I do. Um, in New York City, it's more like. Um, like house and club music and you kind of have to be on especially if you're like mixing from song to song because people can tell if you're going from one song to another it's a i have heard wreck. some atrocious yeah, transitions yeah, yeah my transitions my transitions are smooth i i remember being at an event and uh i don't know the dj that was playing but she speeded up a song so fast that it just, it didn't, it didn't make sense. Yeah, 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 and then the yeah. beats didn't even yeah. mash up anyway. Yep, yep. I don't understand that. No. I don't understand I, it. I, uh, when I was younger, I had to DJ a couple of times. And I, I had to do it for an event uh, last year. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I always had a good time doing it. I, um, for me, the whole DJing thing started when I was 16 years old. I'm 45 years old. From 16 until 45, I've been collecting music, going to the city, making special trips, just my music's library is so vast and so multi-genre that no matter where i go i'm gonna do a good job yeah. well i think you know what we're gonna do uh, because he's also a podcaster 
So we're going to do some work together. And I think one day you're going to have to come on my show and we'll have to have you mix a little bit. Please, please, please. That I think that would be yeah. awesome. I would love to do that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been a while since I've, you know, gotten to do that. But, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And you All guys right, are going to be able to look forward to that. But I know you are going to uh, enjoy yourself with dinner and that's get right. yourself ready to play and get the crowd up. That's right. Now, are you playing for the rest of the night? Um, after the uh, sing-along, um, they're going to turn into a dance party. So okay. I'm ready. All right. Now, <laughs> now, are you also playing the music for Carl Max? No, no. No? No, no. I don't know who is. Um, I think... The sound guy here is. Okay. But I have the capabilities to do as well. I love it. I love it. Well, Uncle's nephew, you're going to see a lot more Uncle's of him because nephew. he is going to join me for another Drinks with Just podcast where it could just be us. Perfect. All right. Wonderful meeting you. Oh, my God. Thank you, guys. You got it. Get Peace, the floor up. And happiness. Absolutely. And happy holidays. There you go. And for the rest of you, again, we are live streaming throughout the night. So please make sure you keep tuning in. If not, you can go on to the Drinks With Just podcast because later on this week, as a special surprise, I'm going to make sure all of these live interviews are set to the podcast for you as well as YouTube for all the videos. So we'll be talking to you in a bit. I will make sure I let you know when the next person is. Wow. we have, hey, hey, come to Hawaii. Of course I would come to Hawaii for can you. I <laughs> I, of course. I miss you. Girl, got to go to Hawaii. I'm going to have to go to Hawaii. That's it. And you know what? It's like, it feels like it's 10 degrees below zero right now. So I could use some nice, warm, uh, yeah, warm sunshine at this point. This is what I need. You're being summoned. All right. All right. So I'm going to let you, you go. You, you, you so got it. Thank you. For the rest of you, this has been such an amazing night so far. Um, a lot of people have been giving me comments. Um, I freaking love this. I love when you guys get to interact with me. It's very rare that I do Facebook Live. As you know, I had episode 106 come out this week. This is a special. It's it's Thanksgiving. It's the time of giving. So today we have a live show all through the night. And then you will make sure to get this. If any of you missed it, you can get all the interviews from this particular event at the same time because I will put them into a nice, neat little box for Apple, iTunes, and uh, your podcast app, and Mixcloud, and YouTube, and everything. So don't worry, guys. You are not going to miss a beat. We will get back on the camera soon. I get a yes for going to Hawaii. 79 degrees here. You know what? 79 degrees. I wore two coats, a hat, gloves, a scarf, and uh, wool pants, and I'm still freezing. So, uh, yeah, I might have to take a trip to uh, Hawaii very soon. Good to see you on Facebook Live. Thanks, Gina Cooper. It's good to be back. I had to take a little hiatus like uh, a lot of people do sometimes. But we are back, and we are in effect, and we're having a great time here at the New Jersey LGBT Chamber of Commerce annual holiday sing-along. Uh, we have the uh, host, Farley, who was actually on the previous video, and she is all of a sudden leading the sing-along. She's actually pretty good. I'm impressed. No dog in a five-mile radius needs to hear me sing, so you're not going to hear that at all. Uh, plus, I do Michelle Mitchell, how you doing, girl? Uh, I don't know all the words to these songs, and I don't have my glasses with me to see the screen. So uh, they're in the car, and I'm not going back outside. But for the rest of you, uh, I will have a couple more interviews coming on very shortly. So please stay tuned. If you see me come on, jump on, say hello. I want to say hello to all of you. We'll be there soon. I told you we're live streaming. We've been uh, live streaming. I think I did sound check at six o'clock. It's uh, coming on 745 and the Drinks Just podcast is still here at the New Jersey LGBT Chamber of Commerce I'll annual holiday sing along and I am here with Medina. Now Medina, first of all, when I saw you walk in and you're looking like a pimp, I'm totally digging it. Like if I could get by with wearing a hat, I would. But Medina is actually the founder of the New Jersey LGBT Chamber of Commerce. So um, first of all, thank you for coming over and introducing yourself and, and loving, uh, you know, what everybody's doing here. But, you know, we were talking beforehand, and you guys didn't get to see that, but you are a 37-year-old man. I am. And, and I am very impressed with you because there are a lot of people out there, and I, I said to you that you were inspirational because to create something like this and to actually, like, at 
37, well, actually probably 35 years old because it's it about was, two years old. Yeah, I think it was 34, actually, 35 when the concept was being, like, I really mean, run through. Most people can't even get their lives together at 34. So how did you have, like, the balls to actually, I hope you don't mind that I say that. But oh, I'm in on that I have. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, of course. But, <laughs> oh, this is great. I love him. Uh, but so, so being, like, a 34 at the time, how did you like actually make this come to fruition because this is a tall task um so i have to always give you know we it was founded with you know five other lgbt business owners all of us came simultaneously to a table because we had been expanding our businesses across the country and we're realizing that and especially with like new york being our our sister city that a lot of new jersey lgbt representation was going into new york to find their resources sense of community and empowerment and I'm like, wait, but we live, work, and play in New Jersey. Why don't we have our own? Why aren't we breaking silos? And so my work as a strategist had led me to always going into communities and making sure that they feel empowered and connecting the dots. And uh, I'm really proud that Kimberly Williams really opened the table up and was like, we should all come together and create this chamber. And then after that, it was just everyone empowering themselves to find our silos, you know, our Maple Woods, our Asbury Parks, and say, listen, we have such serious social, social, um, social issues that need to be brought, and we're very lucky to have partnerships with Garden State Equality and Christian Fuscarano. Shout yeah, out to Christian's Christian. Actually here and he's here. I'll get him on the mic too. Being amazing, and um, we said, what about our our rights and our our ability to build wealth? The LGBT community commands. Uh, what over a trillion dollars in buying economic power how are we wielding that to make corporations more inclusive how are we wielding that to make sure that our lgbt enterprise certification is at the same value as a minority business enterprise and by building wealth we're empowering our families we're being better contributors to our neighborhoods and in the end we will unite to really wield that economic wealth to cause legislative change to create programming that arms younger generations to be the leaders of tomorrow and I think it was day by day, week by week, and not looking at the totality of the weight of it and just going, you know what, we're going to fucking do it as well as we can every single event, every single year. And then that's led up to this wonderful event where everyone is really celebrating not only being LGBT, but in, in having a beautiful holiday together. Right. So I commend the current board. I'm happy to be stepping back, empowering it, and then getting a dope conversation with you. I know. We've really, uh, for like five minutes, had I'm like, like a oh, thanks, man. I'm, I'm still digging the hat. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm trying. I, you'll, you'll learn this about me the more we talk that I never show any like up anywhere without a leather jacket on. I think that's the boss. Look. I think that's the other thing in business. I think the way our community does business uh -huh. is so fucking boss because it's the individuality and the just the I look at clothing as a storytelling and an armor that's for it. me. And so I always dress like an old Spanish man. Like wherever I go, there's always like a fedora. But for me, that makes me comfortable on myself in the room. And I think that your jacket is super what like, besides I, the do, the hair is, is magnetic. The hair is gray, dude. I mean, it is super <laughs> And it's dope. natural gray, not that dyed shit. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're like silver foxing the hell yeah, out of the I, I, I say that I George Clooney it out. You know, but you totally. actually, uh, it's and it's funny that we talk about clothes because mo most of the time when I go out, my friends know me from wearing a black T-shirt. If I don't have a black T-shirt on, they don't recognize me. But I did happen to dress it up a little bit tonight. No, I'm, you it's, know. it's Top Gun real. Like, you know, I'm really, I'm there for it. I, I was trying, man. So how about you? What, what has been your experience with, like, the chamber that you have loved? Well, night? actually, this is the first time I've been to this event. And, and as I said, I'm in Philadelphia. Now, I did go to the national conference. In Philly, you in guys Philly. snagged that. It was... You know what? It was an awesome event, and I've never seen so many positive people. And I, I wish, you know, there are so many people whose businesses do struggle because they're afraid to go out there and network and talk. And then, and once they do, they're afraid to call on those people. The follow up is the number one. Like as a, as a, like so, my my main um, agency, it's ten years old, is as a strategist. So I get the portion of working with like Senator Booker. Currently work with Ma the great oh, Mayor Raj J. Baraka of Newark, um, and. I would say for smaller agencies and smaller companies that are LGBT led, it's the fear that they are not good enough to be in that room. And that's a that's a condition I need us all to break out of and understand the follow up and the ask. That's the greatness. That's how you go from one side to the Fortune 500 in like a span of 
a really quick yeah. time. It's all about just follow up. Ask and follow up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and ask for the follow up. Like I, I, you know, I found one of our wonderful sponsors, which is I think Joshua from I think Honda of Princeton, right? Right. And I'm just like, we should have coffee. To talk to me more about how we can get you to be a platinum member. And, and that's all it takes. Yes, that's it. Ask people, ask and you shall receive. Uh, you know what? That is the perfect way to bring that to an end. Yeah. But you know what? You and I are going to do a lot of follow up together because uh, we have things brewing. We, we have some things brewing. And also, if there's anyone who wants to, like, just has a question about what it is to do uh, business with the chamber or to be an LGBT leader, I'm Sidney Medina, C I T I M E D I N A, on all my social media. You guys can reach right out to me, DM me. I will. You know, point you to the right direction. Yeah. And if you don't mind, once I I actually roll this out as a podcast rather than just live Facebook video, if you don't mind, I'm going to put your contact information in there. So if people want to contact you, oh, 100%. They, they can find that in the show notes. Um, now, as you're stepping down, it's kind of nice that the music stopped. Um, oh, by the way, hey guys, Ed Callis, I love you too. Um, I did get your message about another guest. Uh, and oh, get, hey, get yeah, just to dance. Yeah. That'll happen. I, I, I used to be a professional dancer, salsa, oh, merengue, it's, cha cha. It's, Except I'm a lead. I can do this. We can make this happen. We'll see. The hat will come off. If That's not, good. if not, when you come down to Philly, we'll go dancing. That would be amazing. Wouldn't it? I'm so in. We'll go to Brazil's. Yes. Yes. Cuba Libre. That's it. This that is, is my drink of choice. That, that I love it. it. It was mine too until I stopped drinking soda. That is the only downside to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I haven't had soda in like five years. Oh, you're bad. Except, like, well, no, that's I not true. That's not true. Once in a while, like, when I was at home for Thanksgiving and my parents didn't have anybody drink yet. So I'm the same way. I just have one traditionally Puerto Rican mm -hmm. soda, which is called Cola Champagne. And it's the it. one thing for Thanksgiving I had because my mom mm -hmm. makes sure to buy it because it's the only time I drink soda. My, my father was not allowed to drink this year because he was on medicine. Ah. So uh, so apparently in his mind, that means like none of us should have been drinking and we all had to suffer, but you know, we managed. So it wasn't as fun this year as it usually is, but I mean, we I'm made sure it we're still making the laughter happen. Oh, though. believe me, that it doesn't take very long. Who else we have on? Uh, I may have, I'm, we have a. Uh, Belinda, what's going on, Belinda? I haven't seen you in a long time. Maria, my girl. She is wonderful. I was on her show before. She's a wonderful live show. How cool is that? Um, May I have his hat? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, Maria, seriously, the hat. The hat's what got... You walked into this room, and I was just like, who's that man looking all dapper? Oh, thank you. I, I, I'm real. This is actually a startup that made the suit, too. Okay. Um, and I, I love supporting small business and startups. I probably put most of my money into startup companies. So the hat is actually a company called Nordster. It's uh, about four months old. Wait a minute. And they, oh, I feel like I've heard that. they've really done a good marketing promotion. So Nordster, you can grab this hat up. It's a really, it's felt, it's easy. Yeah, it's pretty hot. But I'm gonna let you get back to things. But what is the one thing as you step down that the Chamber of Commerce needs from the people in this area and the state of New Jersey? So there's two things, you know, talking to the board member quickly was one is we need you to volunteer. We need you to show up to the events and offer maybe just a moment of your time to help us move initiatives forward. We're partnering to do youth empowerment. We're trying to bring an award show to the state. We really need your your time and building something that's great because it's only the sum of the voices that are heard as a part of the chamber. That's why it's a chamber. And the second thing is if there are corporations that you know have inclusion as part of their diversity plan and they need to engage our community they should reach out to the chamber and have the chamber be the warmest ambassador for them so those would be the two things is bring your time bring your energy and then also bring um bring corporations to heal that they should be engaging the chamber that's fantastic i love it and i love meeting you this is you and i are going to do a lot of work to, oh look see the second guy who i let kiss me i that doesn't Carl Max is the only man who's allowed to kiss me. Oh, that's that's the time. But that's okay. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you. Uh, gonna you're gonna get a pass on gonna, that. We're gonna do. I'm giving him. I'm giving him a pardon. Mm -hmm. I'm allowed to give pardons on like some people. Uh, so, mm -hmm. 
you, you know what I'm talking this about. is why you'll have to support the chamber we need these causes met please help. yeah absolutely but um thank you for joining me you're gonna see a lot more of him i'm gonna bring him on uh just for an intimate interview uh one of these days if you don't mind i would love that i'm coming to philly it, yeah South absolutely Cuba, that's this, it our whole agenda is set we're, we're done we have a thank whole like weekend plan perfect. thank you so much guys thank you so right. much oh, you got super it. Great. i love it and i'm gonna go sang all right you do that so anyway, so we've been having a great time here. Medina is super cool. Uh, founded the uh, the New Jersey LGBT Chamber of Commerce. For such a young man to put his heart and soul and to create something like this is, for those of you out there who are younger, is so inspirational. Uh, he is an extreme example of what you should uh, look up to or who you can look up to, um, not only in the community, but just as general, uh, as a human being, because you know, uh, working with kids for, for uh, you know, so many years, there was a lack of confidence, a lack of, of social skill, a lack of belief in yourselves. And I want you guys to know that part of being here and, and other events, uh, but especially this one, it shows you that it doesn't matter how old you are, whether you're young or old, you can make a, day, a difference and you can make a change and you can support the communities that you feel comfortable belonging to. Uh, Belinda, thank you. Happy holiday to you too, girl. I hope it was safe, healthy, and happy. Um, Kirsten, hey, hey, how you doing? I hope you're enjoying yourself. You're going to the Chamber event in Texas on Friday night. I love that. Hey, uh, Chris, uh, Kirsten, do me a favor. If you are going to the event in Texas, will you do me a favor? and uh, either take some pictures or um, even take a video of yourself um, just saying hello and, and just uh, showing me a little bit of the event. I would love to incorporate that into uh, my next show, if that's possible. Um, just give me the okay if you can do that. Um, and uh, you could just uh, you know email me at dwjphl at yahoo.com. I'll put everything in the uh, notes. Uh, where you can hook up with me and send me something because I would love to see what the event's like in Texas. I think that would be awesome. Um, in fact, you know what? I think that would be great for all the the LGBT Chamber of Commerces around the country. If you have an event going on, I want to know about it. it. Hell, I'll I'll be there if I can. So um, let me know that information, guys. But we are going to uh, let the people talk for a little bit. Um, I'm going to grab something to eat because I am hungry, but we have so many more people coming on this is going to be amazing uh and it's only eight o'clock we still got more time carl max is going to jump back on uh right before he goes on at nine o'clock and he's now going to be dressed as whitney houston and he i cannot wait to see him perform he is my favorite um but we are going to let the crowd get rolling and uh we're going to be back on in a little bit Hey everyone, it's Jess Brana. Strings with Jess podcast is back, and we have been going all night at the New Jersey LGBT Chamber of Commerce annual holiday sing along. Guys, I've been having a great time. I'm starting to get tired though, but we have, uh, first of all, one of our guests who is already on. We have her partner, Emily, correct? And we have Christian. And the great part about Christian is that he is the, are you the president? Executive director. Oh, the yeah. executive director of Garden State Equality. And you do a lot of great things uh, for the state of New Jersey and for the LGBT community. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go from one to the other because we already talked to you about the film and I wanna get your take on it too because you didn't get on the mic yet. Um, and it's such a beautiful story, but um, so, Christian, how long have you actually been the executive director of Garden State Equality? I joined Garden State Equality about two and a half years ago, and uh, we've been making tremendous progress over the last two and a half years. We've expanded our programs. I like to talk about two pillars of our programs. One is safe schools. So we go into New Jersey's over 600 school districts and do anti-bullying trainings with young people, with teachers, with administrators. We only have two safe school coordinators. So with 600 school districts, that means that there's thousands of schools. So we're only a drop in the bucket, but we're trying our hardest because every student should be able to learn in a safe and affirming environment. Do you know, I actually used to be a high school teacher in New really? Jersey. Which high school? Uh, Salem. Salem? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, um, yeah we're, we're in all 21 counties doing different work in, in school districts and um, a lot has changed over the years, but kids are still bullied at a really high rate. 
And so we want to make sure that teachers are properly trained to address those issues. And also students feel empowered to start an LGBT student group or uh, what you might know as a Gay Straight Alliance. Right, the GSA. Yeah, yeah. And, and those are phenomenal organizations. And the fact that the kids have so much, um, you know, ambition to create these and create the safe spaces that we have in our schools is so important. Now, how do you know these two lovely ladies? So one of the other pillars of Garden State Equality is our health and wellness programs. And one of those programs is going into older adult facilities and teaching providers on how to be LGBT inclusive. As our community ages, they're going into these homes and they may not feel respected or valued by the employees. They're being bathed, fed, clothed by strangers who may be homophobic. Now, Jan and Emily are two of our strongest members who help us go into these facilities and talk to these providers and talk to LGBT older adults and let them know that we are their ally. Now, I'm not gonna disclose their age. They can do that on their own, but they add a lot of value to our work because they're speaking from the same space that the members in these homes are speaking from. And so we're ha so happy to have them doing this work with us. Yeah. And, and Emily, let me ask you this. Um, what do you see being for, for aging LGBT um, community members? What do you see the, the Garden State Equality um, Organization doing like the very best of for our community when it comes to senior LGBT members? Well, if there are any problems or we have questions about facilities that are around and they're not clear enough, they do. They back you up and go ask them and they're right there to help you all the time. They're a wonderful group, absolutely. Now, do, have, have you noticed um, over the years, I'm going to turn it this way because I keep getting a, a blue shadow on everybody, but have you seen over the years, um, or, or can you tell me what the, what one of the biggest problems as we start to age being an LGBT uh, uh, community member? Like, what are the problems that you have seen as you're getting older? The problem is that people don't understand we're no different than anybody else. And they fear what they don't know. And that's of all marginalized people. And we, we being a minority, are automatically marginalized. So when Emily and I go in and we speak to the aging, we're 82. I'm 82, Emily's 89. So they're not listening to a young kid say, oh, you should do this. They're listening to two old people who emphasize, uh, I feel for these people, I feel for their fear, and I want them to know, let's just have conversation. And I ask of all the LGBT community, be visible, be verbal, be out there in a positive manner, and nobody's going to turn you away. Emily and I don't have a lot of longevity left. And what we want to do is say, hey, it's okay. It's okay for you. It's okay for us. And Christian, with the organization of Garden State Equality, opens those doors for us constantly and always. And I can go to him and say, gee, I think you're slack on this. Can you make this happen? And they do. And it's a wonderful thing to know that we have bullying in all ages, childhood, middle school, and we have it in seniors. And the major thing is we've got to correct this. We've got to stop it. And people of all those genders have got to make it happen. Oh, no, I love that. In fact, uh, a lot of people are loving you. Uh, Rhonda says, uh, you ladies are amazing. Uh, we also got a hello from Mexico, uh, Dr. Shelly Hipsky, who is the CEO of Inspiring Lives Magazine, which I actually write for. She's sending her love to you guys, too. And I think it's so important that the message gets out there that it just doesn't, I, you know, there's so many times where we tend to focus on the younger communities and, and the as we age, I mean, the older communities, they're going through the same problems. And, and everybody deserves the kindness and the compassion and the help that they can get. And I have to tell you, Christian is 28 years old. 
I have a granddaughter who's 40. Oh my God, I'm almost twice your age. No. Yeah, I'll be 42. No. <laughs> and this, this baby over here, I go to him, I plead, I beg, let me go out there. And he is so supportive. He has the most wonderful team of young people who are extremely supportive of us, welcome us, and they help us. And they help connect us and our generation to bridge the gap of all generations. And that's the beauty of young and old working together. Bridging this gap of differences that were not so different after all. And, and if you guys don't know, if you didn't listen to one of the previous um, interviews that we did uh, when I started this evening at like 6.30 or 6 or 7, um, but these two wonderful ladies actually had a documentary done about them. And you guys just won an award, a ten, your 10th award. Our 10th yeah, yeah. award. We have just won our 10th film festival award. Uh, our filmmaker, Robin Kemp, who made the film, I have to give her credit too. She's not only brought us to the surface, she works with Garden State Equality. She reaches out and she is the most positive influence of saying, let's make it all work. And, and that's what we've got to do. We've got to interact. We've got to reconnect. There can be no walls in our and, and the LGBT community. There is no room for a wall. There is only room for bridges. Let's build them. And I say to your public, help me build the bridges. Absolutely. There is, because the only day I have is tomorrow and make my tomorrow better. That's beautiful. Now, Christian, let me ask you this as being uh, the executive director. What events do you have coming up? You know, we're coming into 2019. Um, and obviously Garden State Equality just does amazing programming. What kind of events do you have coming down where people can help, volunteer, um, spread the wealth, whatever? Well, we do events all throughout the state. Um, there's, uh, you know, if, if people are watching and interested in what Jan and Emily are talking about, there's a Sage Table event coming up at Camden, in Camden County at Rutgers University. Oh, that's close to me. Okay, great. Yeah. So, um, LGBT older adults will be sharing their stories there and There'll be different types of generations there to listen to those stories because, I mean, we are here because of folks like Jen and Emily, and they have given so much to our community, and they're still giving today. We owe so much to the previous generations that have come before us and sacrificed more so that we could live a fuller, more equal life. Um, and so it's an honor, honestly, to work with Jan and Emily every week at Garden State Equality because not only are we invested in the older adult programs that they were talking about, but also, like, I need to give back to the community because they've given so much. Um, and that's what I want younger people to understand is that, you know, the rights that we have today are not guaranteed to us and they can be taken away even quicker than we won them. Um, we're seeing that a lot with the current administration, you know, striking down a lot of our, our progress at a federal level. But here in New Jersey with the, our ally, Governor Murphy, he's making sure that we keep a lot of the protections in place that we fought hard for. And, we re, and we're so thankful for that. Um, and we're just making a lot of progress in this state. So if anyone is watching and wants to get involved, Garden State Equality, we need your help. We have 150,000 members throughout the state. We are in all 21 counties. So if you live in North Jersey, if you live in South Jersey, and if you believe that Central Jersey exists, which I do <laughs> because I'm from here, we are there and we are on the ground doing work. And so please come join Jan, Emily, myself. Um, we have programs for all different types of people. We're in Trenton fighting for policy changes. So if you're into politics, we're there doing that work. If you're aging or you wanna fight for the aging community, we have those programs in place. If you care about our young people and want to make sure that they grow up in a healthy and affirming environment, you can come and do that work with us in New Jersey schools. There's just so much going on. I know a lot of folks think that after marriage equality, we had won all of our fights. That is simply not the case. Even here in New Jersey, 
We have so much going on and so much work to do. And honestly, why wouldn't you want to work with folks like this? I mean, I wake up every day excited to do the work with folks like Jan and Emily who keep me energized and keep me motivated to keep pushing forward for equality in our state. Absolutely. And you know what? Even though I'm in Philadelphia, anything that you have coming down the pike, let me know. I'd be more than happy to uh, come and lend uh, a hand or my skills for you and, and help you get the message out there. In Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Inquirer did gay and gray article, and they included Emily and I. And I am so grateful for them. Thank you. Anybody that spreads the word, I can't. I, I want to plead with these kids. I want to plead with everybody. If you're gay, honest to God, come out. Be so damn proud of yourself. You know, you cross many bridges. We're here for you. If you're frightened, if you're scared, we're all here for you. And I personally, you call Garden State Equality, and they will reach us. We had a social worker call Emily and I. They had a 13-year-old kid wanted to commit suicide, and they said, would you mind talking to her? We brought her to our house. We talked to her. Don't worry about your sexuality. It will decide it for you. Don't get excited. We're here for you. Reach out. Be part of our community. Be proud of who you are. You guys have to be some of the most inspiring people that I've, that I've met in a long time and I, I love what you're doing and seriously any help that you need you just give me a call and I will make sure that I lend a hand for whatever I can do for you okay yeah, thank you, thank you so much we just want to pass the word along I, I, that's what I'm trying to do that's what I'm trying to do thank you guys you guys are a blessing I love it uh what I'm going to do is when this actually comes out as a podcast later on this week uh, because that's going to be podcast number three this week because uh we usually only do once a week but it's Thanksgiving. Time to give a lot. So uh, when this comes out on YouTube and podcast, if you don't mind, I'm going to put the link to New Jersey State Equality on there uh, or Garden State Equality. So that way uh, everybody can get your information and reach you if they need to. Okay. I appreciate that, Jess. And thank you for what you give to our community, lifting up important voices so that folks can hear these stories. It's, it's so important. And thank you for giving that back to our community. That's why I do it because I love the stories. You know, I mean, that's how we grow. So Guys, thank you very much. It's been an honor. For those of you out there, I will make sure that their information is in the links. And uh, we're going to have, I don't know who's coming on next, but we're going to have somebody on very, very shortly. So we will be back in a few minutes. Stay tuned. Guys, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. And thank you for your support. Bye. everyone welcome back to the drinks with jess podcast we are raring to go we are still moving strong i have the deputy mayor of asbury amy quinn right here with me you just actually got to the event i did uh we have our council meetings on the second and uh fourth wednesday of the month so we had a council meeting tonight and it ended and i was able to come with my friend michelle gladden who writes from the asbury park sun and we're here to celebrate the New Jersey LGBT um, chamber, which is having more and more events in Asbury Park, which we're so excited about. Yeah, and it seems like a lot of the members are based up here. Yeah, so Asbury Park has a long history with the LGBTQ community, going back, I'm gonna say, to the 60s. Um, and then 
fast forward ahead to some of the first, Esri Park did some of the first gay marriages in 2004. And um, as I was one of the first people who got married in 2013 on the boardwalk when it became legal. So Asbury's history with the gay community and the LGBTQ community has been, you know, I would say downright welcoming throughout, throughout the last four or five decades. Now, now as the deputy mayor, do you see this this town changing at all, especially with the current administration, uh, maybe living in a little bit more fear or are people starting to expand their thoughts a little bit? So I think it's interesting. Monmouth County, which Asbury Park is part of Monmouth County, is a very Republican county. And Asbury Park is this really liberal enclave in this Republican county. So. Um, when things become more conservative, quite frankly, I think Asbury Park becomes more liberal. So we were one of the first towns who came out welcoming marijuana dispensaries, um, whereas most of our sister towns in Monmouth County passed resolutions to reject them. So I'm not sure that you're seeing Asbury become more conservative. I would probably say that um, more liberal people are coming to Asbury fighting the current administration. Now, be, and also being so close to New York, I'm right. sure you have a lot. I mean, what are you, like 90 minutes from New York? Maybe not even? Yeah, about I would say about 90 minutes to New York and then maybe 100 minutes to Philly. So we're like perfect in both of, you know, obviously New York has a huge gay community and Philly has, we used to call it the gay well, that, right. that's where I'm. That's where I am. Right, so we used to go to Sisters. Yeah. Um, Back in the a, day. Yeah, yeah. It was a long, and it was, yeah, there was Hepburns and... Yeah. Oh, believe me, I date um, myself quite often. Yeah, didn't we all? So, um, so yeah, so Esbury is a perfect, perfect um, location if you are going to be spending some time in New York or spending some time in Philly or spending some time in New Hope um, or Lambertville or some of those other um, really great, great gay, high population gay communities. Esbury Park has also the, um, I'm going to, and I'm going to get it wrong, and the and the, um, the, the um, Esbury Park Pride Parade is going to kill me, but I'm going to say we're in our 28th year of hosting the, as, the um, New Jersey Pride Parade in Asbury Park right outside to your right so that is something we are so proud of um, to be hosting that since the 90s and obviously going to host it again in 2019 brings 15 to 20,000 people I think last year was the only year that I missed oh you missed a good year although it rains every year every year well it rained in New Hope this year too and it rained in Philadelphia this year too what's that about Actually, it was pouring in yeah. Philadelphia. It wasn't even rain. It was like downright pouring. I know. We had rain this year too, but I will say we often have rain for it. And this year we had a lot of wind. So um, anyway, Asbury is, um, I think, so happy to be um, a part of the New Jersey LGBTQ chamber. And we're hoping to have an even better partnership and that they do more events here in Asbury Park. Well, thank you for taking the thank time you. to uh, join me. Deputy Mayor of Asbury, Amy Quinn, right here, Drinks with Jess podcast. We're, God, we still have a lot more people to bring on. I think I've talked to like 17 people already. Oh, I, is, is he coming for you or for me? He owns Watermark, which is. Oh, okay. Oh, you're one of the sponsors. Okay. We're, we're just bringing people on now. New Jersey did, I forget the name, New Jersey's most. Gage. What was that in, insider New Jersey list we were on? Oh, it was the, um, the top um, power yes, gauge. Yes. yes. So uh, I'm on it, but also Russell. Yes, we it. are. In the so theory. you should take over. We're, <laughs> all right, we're, go, we're gonna welcome Russell right up. We're just like going to town today. We have, everybody's coming on. Hi guys. Uh, I keep looking. So, so Russell, our camera is right here. We're live feeding right now. Cool. Okay, um, so you are the uh, owner of Watermark? I am the owner of Watermark, Okay, so yes. tell me a little bit about Watermark, because Watermark is a sponsor of the NJ uh, LGBT Chamber of Commerce event tonight. Yes, we are, and we've been a sponsor um, for this event the past couple of years, and I also um, host uh, events for the Chamber. Uh, it, Watermark is a, it's a cocktail lounge restaurant, oh, event it. space, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm going, going up to you here. Um, at the other end of the boardwalk, um, okay here in Asbury Park. I, I'm sure I have probably seen Watermark several times. I don't get to come up here that often. You know, where are you from? Philadelphia. Okay, cool. Yeah. Welcome. Oh, what? I, I do love it up here. Yeah? So I, I had to I, I had to come out here and support everybody and support the community. And, you know, Dory's cool. been a good friend of mine for a while. I mean, I can't say no. Fantastic. But, I mean, this is an incredible event to be a part of. 
Um, do you see it uh, hopefully growing? I know this is only their second annual event. Um, I'm sure that's um, what the organizers are hoping for. Yeah, you always want your uh, events to grow and grow. Um, I actually, this is my first one attending. I just walked in the door. So um, I probably am not going to be able to tell you too much about the event itself because I, I, I'm well, I attending for the lovely. first time. It was lovely. It was great. And, and I got here late, right? What time did it start? Uh, six o'clock. <laughs> oh, it did. Yeah. Oh. I, That's okay. Fashionably late. I didn't know. That's it. That's it. Well, thank you so much for my joining pleasure. me. Um, where can everybody find Watermark? Watermark can be found uh, on the boardwalk in Asbury Park at the First at First Avenue and Ocean Avenue. Um, and yeah, we're open uh, seven days a week during the summer, just Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays right now. But yeah, it's a nice little spot to how, grab a how cocktail. How is it up here in the winter? Because I know a lot of people live here, but this is a summer town. I mean, this is a beach town. It's a beach town. Yeah, but the, but there is a culture that is here year round. Um, and there are 17,000 people that live in the city alone. Right. So yeah, we're uh, there's uh, we're partying all year round. I love it. That's that's what <laughs> we I. We have like. a lot of fair weather friends, but no, we're we're here. Um, we're having a good time year-round sounds good well the next time i come up to asbury i will make sure i come cheers. in all right? all right cheers russell thank you so we are just moving along music's getting louder dancing is going uh singing is going oh now it's dancing this is a crazy event this has been so fun probably one of the best events that i've been to uh, besides the inspiring live events by the way um hey nancy score my neighbor uh i'm out of town nachos out of sitters Everything's all good. Um, I am going to turn off the mic for a little bit. I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to come back on with, uh, I believe, one or actually, I might have another guest coming on right now. So I'm just going to see if he's on his way to me because uh, I don't want to miss him because he has been one of the headliners of this event. Uh, and this is why we are all here for the sing along. So uh, he's saying hello to Russell, who was just on, and hopefully we'll get to uh, chat with him in a second. I'm going to see if he comes on over. But uh, I hope everybody else out there is having a good time. We have uh, quite a few people joining in. I love that. That is awesome. Um, but I think what we're going to do is we're probably going to take a little bit of a break um, while people are dancing. I have not danced yet, surprisingly. Uh, but we're going to see if Bob Egan comes on. If you guys don't know who Bob Egan is, he is a fantastic uh, pianist, singer, cute as a button, and... Uh, and he's the one who's playing the piano for the sing-along. He's played in New Hope. He's probably played in Lambertville. Uh, obviously, he's been here uh, all night uh, with everybody else in the crowd getting them moving. So we're going to see if uh, if we can get Bob to jump on. But he looks a little a little preoccupied. In fact, he's going to come on because I just summoned him. Hi, baby doll. All right. So I was already just giving him the idea the camera's going to be right here. Um, we are live. Okay. Hi, okay. Jeff. Hi, Bob. How are you doing? How you feeling, man? I'm doing good. We're having a good time tonight. Oh, my God. I was I was explaining to everybody watching that uh, you are the piano player and one hell of an entertainer. And I've, I've seen you in New Hope I've, before. Uh, over the Chastley. You played Oh, Chastley, yeah, I did. Right? Yeah, I used to. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, um... At Bowman's Tavern, uh, I'm always there, and um, used to be the Logan, right? Or, I've done the Logan Inn, right? And I did. Uh, I was at Odette's for 21 years. I do Bowman's Tavern now, and I do the Raven once a month, okay. maybe twice a month. Okay. So, uh, and then the rest of my week is all here. Okay. So, what happens when it comes to like an event like this for the actual Chamber of Commerce? Well, what well, their idea was to have a like. I do, audio, I do audience participation. We don't put on a show. It's the audience. It's getting everyone involved. So it's a. I think it's really good for the networking thing because it gets everyone to break to uh, get involved, and it breaks it breaks down the. They have a drink, they relax, and they get up and sing, and then it kind of brings people together. So it kind of breaks the ice. A little bit, yeah. Um, so it's a, that's the whole idea. That's I think what Dory wanted with the sing along thing. Um, and it's fun. A lot of people, there were about 10 people that sang tonight that nobody even knew sang. Listen, I don't sing. So. You appreciate I, what people do. I, I talk and I dance. But I loved watching everybody have a good time. I mean, just to see, like, I, the guy who did uh, The Grinch, he was amazing. He lives for that. He comes out at, uh, uh, at Halloween time, he comes out as, um, 
scissors, uh, scissor oh, hands, Edward, Edward scissor hands. Yeah. And then at uh, Christmas time, he's the Grinch. He has something he does all year round. He's the character. He comes every night I play. Okay. He sings all kinds of stuff. I every night I work pretty much. I do open mic, so it's all audience participation. I just did the Asbury on Monday. Okay. We were packed, 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 and they just line up. It's a lot of fun. I just lo I love seeing people do things that they love. It's like. Whenever I think of New Hope, I think of like you and Liz DeFore. Oh, I love and, and now Dina. You know? I adore uh, both of them. Oh yeah. Especially, I mean, Liz and I go way, way, way back. Yeah, yeah. I had Liz on the show. We're gonna have her on again. She's amazing. Angel and I went to college together. Oh nice. So we go back. How far we all go back? I'm not that old. Well, I used to say Angel's not that old. <laughs> uh, you know what? I really don't know Angel yeah, that yeah. well. Yeah. But yeah, we all went to college together back in the '70s. Oh wow. I was born in the 70s. Okay, Jess. No, I'm, just I'm just kidding. But I adore you, and I'm so glad that you're here supporting the, the LGBT chamber. I'm really glad. I'll do it anytime. I love them. This is the nicest group of people, and I'll do it anytime. And I, I hope we do it next year, because yeah. I'll be here. And it was actually nice day. finally meeting you face-to-face. -face. Likewise. Because if you don't know, Bob's on my Facebook, and but we've never really met, like, had a chance to talk and meet. I've never. seen you play. And I came in, and he thought I was somebody else. There's a, there's a reason because somebody posted something and it said and it had a face with your name and so all of a sudden I start I had you as someone else and then when I saw you I'm like well then who are you it got really confused I have to find my post oh that that's funny I want to see that post but Bob oh, buddy, yeah but whatever I love having you on thank you so much for joining me Thanks, Jeff. I will make sure that I come out and see you as often as possible and guys whenever you're in asbury or whenever bob is playing find him and you will have a wonderful time yeah, asbury's uh, moon, moonstruck or the asbury hotel I love it. or mcclunes i'm here a lot too okay. uh, and i'm also the rum runner up in seabright you McClune. need to come down to my town you need to come down to philadelphia Where? oh i used to play there all the time oh that's great i love that i'll come down there there's not really many piano bars there anymore except for tavern yeah did you used to play at tavern when it was raffles before oh, it was wow. tavern okay i was there then Okay. And then when I got involved in, um, really involved with Odette's and New Hope, I had to give that up. Yeah. Oh man, Tavern but used to be one of my favorite places. Yeah, it was I, pro I probably, you know. But we're going way back. Yeah, we're going way back. But for those of you who don't live in Philadelphia, you, you don't know Tavern, but it's a wonderful place. But Bob, I love you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Have a great Christmas. Thank you for having me on your show. Oh, uh, thanks. You got it. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. I think that we are almost done i know uh carl max is going to be coming out uh very shortly uh but i am going to shut off the mic and take a little bit of a break i love that all of you are tuning in it's been so nice talking to you hey victoria shepherd my old student i'm so glad you're on it's been a long time i hope everything's going well um but for the rest of you yes i am going to go and take a break we're going to come back on in a second with uh with carl max but he's coming out now as whitney houston and then we are going to be done for the night so I hope you enjoyed Drinks with Jess. We'll be back in a flash. Everyone, welcome back to the Drinks with Jess podcast. As you know, we have been live streaming all night from the New Jersey LGBT Chamber of Commerce annual holiday sing-along. Carl Max is actually in the background right now uh, doing his uh, Whitney Houston impersonation. And he's fantastic. He was wonderful. He, he really is. Perfect job. He really is. Now, this is uh, Lori Sellinger, and I wanted to make sure I pronounced her name right. And she is the president of the New Jersey LGBT Chamber of Commerce. And Lori, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk to me. But um, so, how long have you been uh, with the chamber? The chamber's been in existence since 2013. I've actually been on the board at uh, 2014. Okay. Oh, so you've been here for pretty much the whole. Almost. I'm the first wave after the founders. Okay. And how have you seen it grow in all in these couple of years? Um, well, mostly um, being able to um, create events like this, breakfast events like that, the holiday event, um, and just being more visible. It's, it's been about visibility for us. We're trying not to be the best kept secret of the state. <laughs> and, and, and what's great about this organization is not only is it part of the national chamber, That's right. but... Um, but this particular Chamber of Commerce covers the entire state of New Jersey. That's correct. That's and that, right. that's a pretty tall order. It is a tall order. Uh, we've done events from uh, Jersey City all the way down to here to Asbury Park and as far west as Lambertville. 
So, yeah, that, that's it. And we still haven't really touched half the state yet. But you're right about being uh, part of national. Any any business that uh, wants to be certified does it through national. And we help with that process by doing the site visits during the process of the vetting process. And, and when it comes to not just running the chamber, but having events such as this, um, how how often do you need to count on volunteers and how much more help do you actually need? We can always use help. Always. Yeah. And, and can help come from all over the state since you do functions all over the state? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And we can have, if we can have all um, representatives in a, say here in Asbury Park help us set up uh, events, that's good. If we had people out in the Morristown area, that would be great. Uh, we, we can always use help when we need help. Um, and our volunteer committee to bring in the volunteers. We need help with the marketing. We need help with um, the membership committee. Mm -hmm. So all of our committees need help. Right. And it seems as though um, a lot of nonprofit organizations, and including this chamber, um, are, are, are short-staffed, overwhelmed when it comes to projects like this. Many people, do you see wearing like several different hats right now? That's, that's very true. I, and that is a... Um, that is a topic of discussion in the nonprofit world is that everybody needs help. Yeah. Well, we're going to encourage everybody out there. If you are in the state of New Jersey, now I'm in Philadelphia, but I told Dory that whenever you need something, you just call on me because okay. I love doing events like this. But for all of you that are out in New Jersey, uh, when this does uh, come also on as a podcast and the uh, and as the YouTube episode later on this week, please make sure you check out the notes. I will have a link to the New Jersey LGBT Chamber of Commerce. If you want to volunteer, if you if you want to donate, I mean, you take donations too. Sure, certainly. Yeah. We'd love to be people that have to be members, though. Oh, absolutely. So then if you're a member, then you that encourage you encourages you become engaged. Yeah, and and when you're, I mean, I know that I I've been a part of a, an LGBT business directory. Okay. Um, but there is something about being a part of an organization like this because. This is where businesses connect and you find out how you can help each other. I mean, I met more people tonight that I can work with than, uh, than I've met in a long time. Oh, that's, and that's exactly what this, yeah. this event is all about. Yeah. Having fun, but also making those connections. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you, if you want to make the connections, it'll, it just helps you grow. You can't grow alone. That's correct, too. That's very good point. And the New Jersey LGBT Chamber of Commerce cannot grow alone. We want to make sure that they are here to last. I know this is only your second annual sing-along, uh, but you have been established for a while. And and something that I said on one of the other feeds that we did tonight was, you're not only making this a, a priority now, but it's something for future generations because the future LGBT community are going to be our business leaders they're going to be our political leaders they're going to be our educators and you guys need a place to go to just to even bounce ideas off of if you need to or if you need help with something they are all there so Lori thank you again for being the president of the chamber and thank you so much for joining me and having this wonderful event I look forward to doing a lot more with you and we're looking forward to working with you thank you all right you got it and for all of you out there guys we are going to be closing out the show. I was hoping to uh, get Carl Max back on while he's dressed up, but I think I'm officially tired. And I have a trip ahead of me. Yeah. But for the rest of you out there, thank you for tuning in for the plethora of videos that I've been uh, living, live streaming tonight. Uh, we will see you next Tuesday with a whole new show and new guests. Wait for the message, for the links to the podcast the YouTube episode of this that'll come out later this week. Uh, but for all of you out there, you can always watch the live clips and we will see you next Tuesday. Have a good night.